Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild. Today we will be taking a look at what you guys can do to prepare for the brand new map, Revontuli Coast, and how you guys can kind of optimize your loadout and stuff like that before the map drops. That way, once the map does drop, you can jump straight onto it and have everything that you need all ready to go so that you can just start exploring and getting all of your stuff set up. You know, 9 times out of 10, I would recommend saving up for primarily tripods and tents. However, this time it's going to be a little bit different. I would definitely recommend saving up for ground blinds instead, and not just the regular ones, but the waterfowl blinds, which do come with the duck and cover uh, DLC. You can use tripods if you want, but uh, it's kind of immersion breaking if you ask me. However, it is still a... Uh a valid option if you guys would rather use the tripods or the regular ground blinds, but I would definitely recommend the waterfowl ones just to kind of keep with the whole aesthetic of duck hunting. It would definitely uh, make it a bit more immersive. However, you can go with the others if you'd like to. But since this map is going to be heavily focused on waterfowl, I am going to be using the waterfowl blinds myself, and that's what we're going to be using for this video to kind of show off what we're going to uh, take out there onto this new map. So let's go ahead and open up our inventory and look at everything I've got. Now, I have one tent on me, and that is so that I can place it down and grab any stuff that I'm not able to carry on me, like the blinds and, um, of course, anything else that we aren't able to fit on our character. However, the first time I jump on this map, this will be the loadout that I carry with me until I've got all of my zones discovered and also uh, got kind of the areas down that I want to place my tents. We will be carrying this. We got our tent with us, like I said. Uh, we also have the Grelk Drilling Rifle because this rifle can take every class in the game from 1 through 9 uh, because of the fact that it is a combination gun. You have the 16 gauge uh, birdshot, buckshot, and slugs along with the 9.3 by 74 r which is a very strong round that covers classes 5 to 9. The other things we have is 30 Harlequin Duck decoys and 30, um, or 30 male and female Harlequin Duck decoys, and this will get you, I believe, three full setups, because you need, I think, 20 uh, per setup, and yeah, it actually says it down there, so you do need 20 to get full uh, attraction status, and it's going to be good to carry at least three of them with you so that you can have three different setups I'm going to assume that this map will probably include decoys for the new duck species. That would be my guess. So uh, take that into account. You might want to save up some money to buy those once it drops. Uh, the other thing I'm going to carry with me is my snort wheeze collar, which you can use any of the deer calls. They all work virtually the same with, I think, the range and attraction levels varying just slightly. But carry one of the deer calls with you so that you can call in the white tail deer. And then I'm also going to be carrying the goose and duck collar because as of now, we don't know uh, what's going to be on there. But I would definitely recommend carrying the duck and goose collar because I'd say it's a pretty safe bet that we're going to get a duck and goose species. In fact, we've seen the ducks in the trailer. And then of course, carry the binoculars of your choice. And I do recommend first aid kits so that if you die, you don't get sent clear back because I've had many times where I have ended up dying because I didn't have med kits on me and I just wasn't able to heal stuff in time. So it, it is unfortunate when that happens. I definitely recommend carrying them with you so that you don't have to go through the painful event of dying and then having to run all the way back. And towards the end of this video, we will be talking about um, how you can earn the money to buy all of this gear because it's definitely not cheap. It will cost you a bit of money to get everything for this brand new map. So we will go over that later in the video. But for now, let's kind of talk about what I would recommend doing. Now, I would definitely recommend just running around on foot and trying to find locations where you're seeing a lot of uh, action when it comes to waterfowl. What you're going to want to do is kind of assess the area and look at what is going to be the most favorable position to set up your blind and all of your decoys. You want to make sure the entire area is, is, is as clear as possible because the last thing that you want is to be tracking some ducks and then they just go behind some trees and you can't get your shot off. Nice wide open areas are going to be the best for placing down your decoys, although you do have to make sure that there's also a good amount of waterfowl uh, action in that area. So that's the other thing to take into account, but once you have uh, found the location, just go into the water, probably... Uh, how far does it let you? Oh, it's 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 outside of... Oh, okay. Okay, so maybe this isn't the one to use. <laughs> Alright, here's a little bit of a better... Uh, a better idea of what you should be looking for. Uh, there we go. So this spot actually does have some harlequin ducks, and because of that, we will go ahead and just uh, real quickly check how many are here, make sure there's no diamonds or anything, and now let's go ahead and get things set up. Now this zone is actually at, it looks like 530 to 7, so one thing you actually could do right now 
if you're wanting to hunt some waterfowl is you could set the time to like 529 and then wait for it to hit that 530 and then eventually they would start flying in but uh that's not really what this video is about so we're just going to show you guys how i would be setting these up now you do want to put it close enough to your blind to where you will actually be able to um, effectively take them down because the last thing you want is for the decoys to be too far away and making it so that you can't actually get a clear shot on everything uh, that should be 10 right there and then we're going to go ahead and pull out the other decoys and put 10 of these down and this will give you the full attraction of 20 decoys it doesn't really matter like how tightly you put them together or what direction they're facing I kind of just do whatever looks best but now we've got ourselves 20 of them down uh, so next what I would do is bring out my tent and drop it right here and grab one of the ground blinds we are going to be using the incognito deluxe waterfowl blind marsh because I do think these are the nicest looking and they are most likely what I'll be using unless they add some new ones with this update which is definitely a possibility. Uh, let's go ahead and place this probably I'd say right about here. This is a good spot to do it and never mind. There we go. It's good now. <laughs> but then uh, with the way they work in Call of the Wild, you kind of just walk in. It'll automatically close and now you have that full uh, visual coverage against all animals. And it does work against everything. It's not just waterfowl. It will give you a visual reduction or I guess visual camouflage from everything on the map. And so now you just wait for some ducks. But obviously since the waterfowl rework has not happened yet, we won't actually go over how to uh, do all the calling and stuff like that. We're going to save that for when the update actually hits because for all we know a few things could change. This video is mainly focused on actually preparing yourself for the release of the map. And because of that, I think it's time that we go over some money making methods to get you the cash that you need to buy all of these tents, uh, ground blinds, tripods, decoys, all that good stuff. Because it does get quite expensive if you want an entire 16 tenths, it, it does end up getting pretty high up there in price range. Uh, if I remember too, I'll put the calculations up on screen. Uh, not sure if I'll remember that by the time I edit this, but we'll see. Now there's a couple different things that we will go over. I'm not going to cover the goose hunting method of making money because that does require you to purchase a DLC. We are going to strictly look at ways that you can make money without having to purchase any DLC. And because of that, we will be using multiplayer and choosing some of the better uh, servers to actually join. And I think you guys already know a couple of the best maps to jump on to make some money. Silver Ridge Peaks and Tiawaroa. Both of these maps have an absolute ton of different animals and all of them are usually in pretty big herds and give a decent amount of cash. So let's cover both of these maps and some of the species that you can focus on to try and make that money that you need to buy all of these tents, decoys and ground blinds. So the first thing that I would recommend is looking for a server on Silver Ridge Peaks that's between the hours of 8 and 10 in the morning and then jump straight on it and hunt some pronghorn. Now once you have found yourself a server that is between the hours of 8 and 10 so that you can hunt some pronghorn, what you're going to want to do is come to one of these lakes that's down in this area. Pretty much all the lakes that are in frame right now do have tons and tons of pronghorn and the thing about pronghorn is they've got very limited areas that they can go to. So they're almost always within those lakes that I just showed. Now, once we have found a herd like this, you're going to want to take out the weapon of choice for you. I prefer the 270 if we're going with something that you can get without having to purchase DLC. I definitely think the 270 is going to be the best for this because it does have four shots before you need to reload again. And a rifle like the 7mm would require you to reload after every shot, so I would recommend going with the 270 for some pronghorn. And as you can see, we were able to take three out before we even had to worry about them running away. So that is going to be the case in most of the uh, zones that you go to. Most of the time you can get three shots off before they do spook if you are quick enough with your aim. And also since this one is stopped, let's just uh, try to get a view on him. There we go. We got that guy down as well. So I would definitely recommend taking advantage of any time that they stop and trying to get some extra ones down because they do give close to a thousand cash each and as you could imagine that does add up over time. So let's go ahead and grab this first one. We'll get a look at everything. 913 cash and that's with 0% consecutive harvest bonus. 
Now, consecutive harvest doesn't necessarily affect the score of animals like it used to, but it does still affect the cash that you get. So you do want to try and keep that up. So make sure you claim everything. That way you guys can get the maximum amount of cash possible. You'll probably notice that this one right here is going to give much more cash, and that is because of the fact that not only is it a larger pronghorn, but it is also going to be 20% uh, more into that consecutive harvest bonus. So obviously the larger the pronghorn, the more money you'll get. So be sure to target the biggest ones out of the herd first, and then kind of go down the line as you take out the bigger males. But a lot of these will give you around 1,000 cash. This one's a little bit less because it is a smaller male. And then this one right here, I believe, is once again a somewhat small one. So you will get around 983. I think that's what it says. It's kind of hard to tell with the chat overlapping it. But you guys get the picture. These give around 1,000 each, which is not too bad at all. And considering this is something that you guys can do without having to purchase a single DLC, I'd say this is a pretty safe bet if you're looking to make some money. And obviously, if you guys do own some of the DLCs that uh, give you extra weapons that do better than the 270, obviously go with those, but we're talking about for the sake of the people that do not have any DLC, this is going to be the best bet that you guys have. Uh, but if you have something like the M1 or the 308, that will 100% do much better than the 270. So go with those if you do have them. So for this next one, there's actually two options, and we're going to be looking for some mountain lions here on Silver Ridge Peaks. Now, the mountain lions, they drink between the hours of 6.30 and I believe 8.30, so you can find them for around two hours in the morning, and then also in the evening, they will be drinking from, I believe, 17.30 to 18.30, so a much shorter window of time, but you can still find them during that time if you need to. And we're going to go ahead and jump into a server that is at Mountain Lion time, which unfortunately looks like there's none. So uh, we will have to real quickly jump onto my own Silver Ridge Peaks and show you guys some of the places you can go to find some mountain lions. Another thing I probably should mention before we actually take a look at some of these mountain lions is the fact that this guide right here is purely for helping you prepare for the release of Revontuli Coast. If you're watching this video after that map is already released, most likely a lot of the stuff you're seeing will not be relevant because of the population redistributions they're going to be doing on Tiawaroa. So any of the stuff that I'm about to show you after we get done with these uh, mountain lions probably will not be a valid uh, way of doing it anymore because they are going to move a lot of the animals around. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're watching this after the release of Revontuli Coast, there's a chance that some of this will not be accurate. But let's go ahead and take a look at these mountain lions because I do not believe Silver Ridge Peaks is getting any changes in this update. So I would recommend coming to this lake right here and going ahead and blasting away at every single mountain lion you see. Once again, using the 270, but if you have something better, go ahead and use that instead. But for the sake of uh, availability, we are using the 270 as we did with the pronghorn. And as you can see, we got a couple mountain lions down already, and we're only at the first part on this lake that has them. If you look across, oh my gosh, that's an albino. <laughs> wow. Okay, what a time for me to find an albino. I haven't touched my own Silver Ridge Peaks in a long time for mountain lions, so I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that this guy's been here for quite some time. Wow, that is crazy. Uh, that's actually going to be one of my biggest rare mountain lions ever, so that's a nice surprise. That's about the last thing I expected to find while just trying to show you guys how to make money. Well, let's go ahead and pick these up and we'll uh, real quickly show you guys why mountain lions are one of the top ways to make money on Silver Ridge Peaks. This one right here gave 1533 and we're not even at the full consecutive harvest bonus and we lost a little bit on the quick kill bonus. So 1533 is crazy and these can give you past 1600 if I'm not mistaken. And this one right here gave 1517. That's amazing. Like honestly, these things are really good for cash and so are a couple of the things we're going to take a look at on Tiawaroa. But let's go ahead and take out this beautiful albino first. I still can't believe that we've got an albino in front of us. That is crazy. Let's go ahead and take a look at the distance away. So it's roughly 217. We can probably aim like top of the back and it'll drop right into the lungs. Beautiful. Let's just drop that other one as well. And the thing about mountain lions is they're very buggy. So a lot of times they will just kind of stop moving after you've shot at them. And this one didn't even hear us. So let's go ahead and drop one into her. But the thing about mountain lions is they'll do this. They just kind of stop after a while and it allows you to get another shot into them. Or if they're one of the ones that you didn't shoot, it'll allow you to get your first shot into them. 
So that's another reason why they're going to be great for making money. As long as you're at least 150 meters away from them, they'll do that thing where they kind of just stop moving and give you another shot. So I definitely recommend hunting them if you're looking to make some money. And I'm not going to go over every single location that you can find mountain lions in this video because I already have a full guide showing off all the spots you can find them. I definitely recommend checking that out if you're looking to find every single lake that you can have mountain lions at because there is quite a few of them. But we're just going to show off a couple of my favorites to kind of help you get a few uh, quick dollars in the game. Well, first of all, here's our albino. That is a beautiful sight. I haven't seen one of these in ages, so this is super, super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and claim it. How big is this thing going to be? 3810. Oh my gosh, that's huge. I think this is my biggest albino that I've ever shot. What a return to our own Silver Ridge Peaks map. I primarily spend my time hunting multiplayer, as a lot of you probably know. Uh, if I'm not grinding for a great one on Rancho or Tiawaroa, I'm probably in multiplayer, and therefore I don't get to see my own map uh, that often. And it looks like we had a really awesome trophy waiting for us after probably weeks, maybe even months of not hunting my own map. That's awesome. That is super cool. So that's going to be a uh, nice little bonus along with everything else that we're showing off today. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Let's pick up the rest of these. And as you can see, there's two more here that are just kind of chilling. And once again, hence why mountain lions are amazing for this, because they just kind of give you the perfect shot at all times. Absolutely love it. And not only that, but they give great money as well. And just like that, we've killed probably, I'd say, seven or eight mountain lions. At this lake alone, and even the females give around 1300 cash, it's insane how much money you can make off of these mountain lions. It really is one of the best money-making methods on all of Silver Ridge Peaks. The other location I recommend checking for your mountain lions is over here. We're not going to actually go there because it's going to take too long to show off all the amazing spots. But this lake's really good over here. Uh, this lake right here is fantastic for them as well. And then also uh, both of these lakes up top are really good. Obviously, there's plenty of other amazing lakes for mountain lions, but like I said, I've got a full guide on them already, so if you want to check out some more spots, go check out that guide. I'll probably either leave it linked in the description, or it'll be a pop-up in the top right of your screen. Now, the next thing that I would recommend is hunting fallow deer on Tiawaroa. Now, it may be a little bit harder to find a server to join because this map is not nearly as popular as Silver Ridge Peaks, therefore there will be less servers up of it at any given time. But if you can find a server that's between the hours of roughly 9 and 12, there's a pretty good chance that you'll be able to find a ton of fallow deer along this river right here, and also this coastline and all of these lakes in uh, this area. There's a few other spots along, like this coastline and these lakes that you can go to but we're mainly going to be talking about the river today because that is going to be the prime area to head to for just massive amounts of fallow deer you will find more fallow deer bucks over at this lake right here but if we're talking just sheer numbers to get yourself some cash this is going to be the place to go to and already we're seeing lots of fallow deer and once again with the fallow deer, all you need is the 270 in order to take them out efficiently. This rifle is honestly pretty good for what it is, and it will do plenty well against these fallow deer. And as you can see, just three of them like that. And they're all dying relatively quick. Now what I do recommend doing, because a lot of times they will be on the opposite side of the river, is I would recommend starting at this lodge and then running the entire river all the way up to this spot right here where you can cross and then running back up this way. By the time you start running up that other side of the river, there's a good chance that some of them will have come back to their zones and you'll get a chance to take out a few more. And already we've got ourselves another herd of fallow deer. That's two of them in such close proximity. And even the herd that we already shot at is starting to calm down and return to their zone. So you could honestly just go ahead and blast this guy as well, along with one of the does behind him. It's really crazy just how many of them you can take out in such a short amount of time. And that's why they're great for cash. And unfortunately, a couple of them started floating. Uh, that is something that you might have to worry about occasionally. Uh, whenever that happens, though, just wait for them to float over. Blame them and then continue your run. More and more fallow deer about to hit the ground. It really is a wonderful sight. And I mean, it, it really speaks for itself. Just look at all those fallow deer. This is the third herd that we've seen, and they're all just in this small area right here. 
that we took out the first herd over here, the second herd was spotted here, and there was a herd in between them as well. It's kind of crazy, like there is so many different spots that have followed here along the river, and this is definitely why I recommend it. And once again, we're not talking about the place that you can find the most bucks looking for diamonds or rares, but just the sheer amount of fallow deer that you could find in a short amount of time to get yourself some cash. That's mainly what we're focusing on here. These aren't the best locations to find tons of bucks, but it will find you just tons of fallow deer in general in very large herds like these. Now this method unfortunately will be much more difficult to do because of the fact that it's so hard to find a multiplayer server that's at Red Deer time, but Red Deer on Tiawaroa are 100% the best money making method on Tiawaroa. It is so insane how much cash you can make just because of how many Red Deer you can find in such a short amount of time. With the run that I currently do in my single player when I'm grinding the great one uh, with my current tent setup, I can kill 50 to 60 red deer stags within an hour, which is just an absurd amount. And there's really nothing else in the game that you can do that with except for, I, I guess, maybe, maybe geese. I think geese are the only other thing that I would be able to kill 60 of them in an hour. Maybe on occasion I can kill 60 whitetail in an hour, but it's definitely not as consistent as it is with Red Deer here on Tiawaroa. Now, unfortunately, after Revantuli Coast releases, they are going to rearrange some of the locations that you find Red Deer at. So, sadly, there is going to be changes to my routes, which it's going to suck. It's going to suck having to find everything, but it is what it is. Um, let's go ahead and find a herd that has a lot of stags in it, because for the Red Deer, I do not shoot the females. Obviously, if you're looking for money, you can, but since I can't find a multiplayer server to join at the moment and we have to use my own map, I am just going to be shooting these stags, but you can use the 270 on them once again. I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I'd recommend getting at least the 7 mil, but uh, for the sake of the people that may not have the 7 mil, we will be going ahead and using the 270 for these guys as well. Let's go ahead and take out a few of them. You should be able to get some pretty solid hits on them regardless of whether or not you use the 270 or the 7 mil. The only difference will be the speed at which they die. However, if you hit a hard shot like that, it really won't matter. But uh, let's go ahead and see. Yeah, 50 to 75. So he is taking a little bit longer to die. And unfortunately, we missed that shot. But they do go down at a fair speed, I guess. So it's still going to be a great grinding method to get some money if you manage to find a server that is at Red Deer time. And once again, I'm not going to go over every location they can be at because there's just too many of them. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out my video called How I Grind the Great One Red Deer on Tiawaroa. Or it actually might be titled Great One Guide for Tiawaroa. Whichever one it is. That is the video you guys should be checking out if you want to find all the locations to hunt them. However, we're just kind of talking about the best grinding methods in this video, and this is definitely one of the best ways to get some cash. And once again, you guys are going to immediately see why Red Deer are so good. 1260 cash for only a level 6 with 0% consecutive harvest. That's insane. Like, that is absolutely insane. You can get clear up to 16 or 1700 cash per Red Deer. If you manage to take down some of the mythicals, and uh, if you're lucky enough to take down a level 9, I believe that's where you can reach 1700 if I'm not mistaken. But it, it's just crazy, the amount of cash you can get for these, and considering I'm able to kill 50 to 60 of them in an hour, with the route that I take that I also show off in my guide video, they, it's just an insane way to make money. When you add that all up, that is over 70,000 cash every hour. And that's why I do think it is the best of the best way to grind, and I see something up there. Oh, that is a glitch in the texture. Beautiful. Thought it was an albino. But as I was saying, by far the best way to make money if you're not hunting the geese. It's honestly insane. But I think that will be it for this video. Be sure to check out those two guides I mentioned, the Mountain Lion one along with the Great One guide for Tiawaroa. I'll try to remember to link them in the description so that you guys can just easily find them. Uh, because it will help you quite a bit with money making and I hope these tips were helpful. Let me know if there's some things I failed to cover because I could definitely see there being some things that I may have missed but I think this will give you guys a good idea of what type of loadout to go with along with ways that you can make money in preparation for Revan Tuli Coast. But let me know what you guys thought and I will talk to you all in the next one. Peace!